boys and girls, I'm Pearl Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. My wife made me this shirt. There will be frolic. There will be frolic today. Because we're doing the second half of all the teams, but I'm changing it up right down in the middle. I don't follow rules. The rule is you're not supposed to do this, but. I had a lot of people say, because the last uh, series we did was uh, up until Montreal. And it was, what's the biggest questions for all the teams? And they're like, why do you have to be so negative? Right? Like, why is it always just the question? It's not always that. But it wasn't that one. And I, you know what? I thought, you're right. Why? Why do I have to just ask the big questions and concerns and all of those sort of things like that? So for the rest of the series, we're going to do plus and minus. The biggest plus and the biggest minus. So you get both. How's that for you? All right, we're going to be going Nashville to Winnipeg. And you're going to tell me what your biggest plus to minus every team is in the comment section after subbing up to the channel right now. Sup, I only need like 47 to get a thousand, and then I can make pennies a day on YouTube. <laughs> okay, <laughs> seriously, you don't make a ton, but this is all part of the Pearl of Wisdom Show, Steel Flyers All Sports Network, as you can see right here. If you like all sports, all four major sports, and all the teams to do with those four major sports, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Also, I go live with Peyton on the radio about twice a week, randomly, and we'll send you out a message when we're going to be there, and you can talk about all the frolic we're about to talk about right now. There we go. The Nashville Predators. Um, so the biggest, we're going to start with the plus, start with the positive. The biggest plus for the Nashville Predators, to me, is simply they're just a better team. Um, I, I have to say, okay, the biggest plus is that they're going to be better next year. Forsberg, signing Forsberg kind of ended all the trepidation to whether they should rebuild or not, which I'll get into with the minus. And bringing in Nino Niederreiter, you've got a solid top six there, especially if Eli Tovinen starts to move up and be what he's always expected him to be. Getting Ryan McDonough, I mean, if you're going to go for it, so to speak, and you have a team like Nashville, probably the way you're going to win, because they don't really have, besides Roman Yossi, they don't really have any superstars up front. Forsberg is a great player, but I wouldn't necessarily call him a superstar. So they're going with depth. So I think the biggest plus here is Poyle did about as good as he could do, I think, considering that what they're planning on doing is trying to win a cup. They're not rebuilding. They're not re even tooling all that much. They're just going for it. Um, getting Kevin Lankinen over Riddich, I think, was a plus. Kevin Lankinen, I know you're going to look at his Chicago numbers and say, oh, that, that's not very good. That's not very good at all there, Perlow. And I was like, yeah, well, Chicago wasn't very good. And he, he and he didn't look that bad. Sometimes he was overwhelmed. But I think in a situation where you have a defense like this, which is, by the way, probably top seven in the league. I mean it. Yossi Fabro, Eklom, Carrier, McDonough, and Boriecki is an awesome defense. So... That's much better than Chicago's defense, not just defensemen, but overall. And not only that, Nashville overall has solid forwards, two-way forwards. So I think Lankin will do a lot better. So that's a lot of pluses. Now, I had to find a minus. The minus to me was I still don't think this is a contending, a true contender. Like when I say a true contender, I say it's going to be a disappointment if you don't win the cup. Colorado, Tampa Bay, most people think the New York Rangers, I personally don't, Carolina, you know, the upper echelon. And it doesn't look like they're ever going to be that. 
the way they're going and the players that they have because they end up being in the middle of the pack, getting some, you know, doing well at drafting, but it's really hard to get impact players where they draft. So I think everybody out there that's Nashville fans are kind of on with me on this. I've talked to a lot of guys that are big Nashville fans. Uh, by the way, Nashville fans, you hear, I hear a lot of people, oh yeah, what does Nashville know about hockey? Let me tell you, there is a ton of very, very knowledgeable hockey fans in Nashville. ton of them. Talk to them all the time. So put that at rest right now. There's a lot of good, solid hockey, uh, knowledgeable hockey fans. And most would say that, yeah, that it's, it's a, it probably would have been better to, to rebuild. But in the market, it's almost impossible not to. So they're in a tough spot. So the negative is that they're not a contender. However, like not a true, true contender. You can get lucky, though. And I think that's really what they're doing here. Uh, the depth gels together. Juicy Sorrows goes off. Hopefully, Lankinen gets to play more games, so he's not so tired. We'll come to playoffs. But we saw what happened against Colorado last year, and I think they could fare better this year with uh, Geno being another year older. I mean, I love that guy. You know, I think they would fare better against Colorado. But do I think they're going to win a series right now. I probably not. How about you? Sub up, Nashville fans. Let me tell me what you think about the Florida Panthers. Or sorry, the Nash, the Florida Panthers, Nashville Predators, and the positives and negatives, or plus and minus, as we like to say. Okay. Next, New Jersey Devils, and we start with the plus. The plus with the New Jersey Devils is getting Andre Pilat. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. This team really needs help with two-way play from their forwards. I think they have forwards that have the mind and to play two-way. They're just learning to do that in the NHL. And I mentioned this in, in other videos that I've done. It's not something that most young players have had to learn. They're, these guys, NHL players, have been able to get by on their offense the whole way. So... Now, they're learning to do it. Nico Hischer was known for his two-way play, and he is a good two-way player. Jack Hughes is getting better, and Andre Pallott is going to help them all. Jesper Bratt, all of that. I just love that pickup. A big plus for that pickup of Pallott. Their defense, to me, getting John Marino, and I know you gave up Smith, but I think New Jersey is getting close to being a playoff team. In fact, I wouldn't doubt if they did it this year. So there's another big plus. And getting Marino certainly helps in that regard. Not a big Brendan Smith guy, so that would be on the minus. But I think everybody, I think most people are looking at goaltending and calling it a minus. And I'm not going to give it a full minus here. And I'll tell you why. Vitek Vanacek looked exceptionally good in a lot of games last year. The Washington Capitals have never been good at developing goaltenders. And quite often, when they go somewhere else, they do a lot better. And I think it's very possible that that could happen here soon with, with, with uh, Vitek Vanacek. He's just got all the tools. The right coaching, they could have hit a slam dunk here. Um, so... I'm, give, I'm giving it almost a plus, actually, just simply because it was worth the risk. Does New Jersey need, 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 need to have that number one guy right now? Are they truly a contender that's going to knock off Colorado? Probably not. So not spending a lot of money and giving a guy a shot who is coming from a team that isn't known for developing goaltenders well, I think is well worth the risk. And so I'm kind of giving it a plus. Now you're saying, well, what's the negative there? What's what's the – it's just a, the only one I could come up with, to tell you the honest truth. I love everything. The only one I could come up with is that Eric Hall is an overrated third-round pick that they picked, that they traded Zaka for, but he's not bad. And they're still not a cup contender. That's the only downfall. This team is young. It's solid. It's incredibly built. 
Tell me what you think. What's your neg uh, minus on this team? Brendan Smith was a minus because I'm just not a Brendan Smith guy. I know he brings grit, as they like to say, but he plays poor defensively. If we're going to have – I don't mind grit. I think I don't mind grit. I love grit. But you got to be able to play. And I know that's really hard to find, so hard to find that an analytics guy like Fitzgerald still went with Brendan Smith. But that's my only real minuses. I don't see too many in this team. I think it's really set up to be very successful. New Jersey Devils fans, sub yourself up to the channel, comment in the comment section, and tell me what you think. You can, by the way, you can tell me whatever you want. You don't have to be nice to me. It's hockey. What's, what's, what goes on in the comment section stays in the comment section. And, uh, yeah, we can go at her. <laughs> it's fine. If you can't do that, I don't know why you're watching hockey. Okay. New York Islanders. Plus. I know that everybody out there right now is going, there is no plus. Well, I don't agree. There are pluses, but. I agree that it's few and far between. I actually like the Alexander Romanoff pickup. Uh, he's only 22 years old. He's getting better defensively every day. Um, he has some offensive upside to him. Honestly, whoever they picked in that spot, if he ended up being as good as Alexander Romanoff is, they would be very happy with it. So they got a good young player that they don't have to wait for for three or four years. So I say that is... A plus. Um, Ilya Sorokin is a huge plus. Huge, huge, huge. I think Ilya Sorokin will challenge this year for a Vezina. He's an amazing goaltender. And if the New York Islanders make the playoffs, it's probably going to be hugely about on the shoulders of Ilya Sorokin. So let's get to the minuses. Zach Parise is on your second line left wing, and they didn't do anything about that. Palmieri, second line right wing. Old. Palmieri is 31, but he plays like he's 35 so far. So maybe he'll be better with, with a little extra break and stuff like that. We'll give it time. But um, Josh Bailey's still your number one right winger, and Barzal doesn't have anybody to play with. Those are the biggest negatives to me. I, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If they don't find a right winger that can play creative with Barzal this year, I think he could be gone. And they're going to have to play him, pay, pay him like a number one center. If they go into, if they go into contract talks and say, well, you know, your point production, blah, 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 blah. So we're going to, you're, he's gone. He's gone. It's, I don't believe it's his fault. I believe he just hasn't had anybody to play with. Tell me if you agree with me there in the comment section. But those are the biggest minuses for me. And because of those minuses, I think they're going to be hard-pressed to make the playoffs this year. He didn't do enough, wasn't able to do enough. Uh, Lamorello thinks that this team will be better just because they had more of a better, more of an off season, and they didn't have to play on the road the first thirteen games, which could I, I I think there is some truth to that, but I still think it's going to be a grind to make the playoffs for the Islanders, and I don't think they're a cup contender. So what are you doing with all these old teams? See, I don't think they're a cup contender, or will they be a cup contender in the near future? Now, if it's if I'm an owner of a team. Maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I'd be like, you know what? I'd rather make the playoffs and still make money and have a team. Maybe. But if I got crap loads of money and I really want to win a cup, I'm telling my general manager here, you know what? Let, let's redo this all over again. Let's get some young players in here, sell off, and build, us, build ourselves a dynasty. But anyways, what do you guys think, Islanders fans? What's your plus minus for both for the New York Islanders? New York Rangers, and I might get slammed for this. I might. Um, starting off with the pluses. The pluses. Alex Lafreniere is probably going to be a beast next year. The question for me is if he can play right the right-hand side. He, they need him, need him, need him to play the right-hand side. 
Uh, other, other than that, the Kreider will have to play third left wing. And if he's happy with that, okay. But ultimately, you want Lafreniere in your top six for sure. Top pair, actually. Um, other pluses, you got Shesterkin. That's... As long as you got Shesterkin, you got a, you, you got a chance. And they have one of, if not the best, defenses in the league. All right. Those are pluses. Not because of anything they really did in the offseason, but just because that is the case. Uh, this was all built by Gorton, mostly, by the way. Everything I just said. Negatives. Minus. The minus. I, I don't know what they see in Vincent Trocek. He had a very good, very good team to play for last year. Yeah, very good line mates, and he only got 51 points in 81 games. Yeah, he has had good years in the past. He's not tremendous defensively, and his five-on-five -five play is pretty average, which is the biggest minus for the New York Rangers. They have a poor five-on-five -five play. They're not good five-on-five. Now, that could get better as with Alexis Lafreniere and uh, a big up for Capo Capo this year. But getting Vincent Trocek certainly doesn't solve it. And for seven years, he's 29 years old. Vincent Trocek has looked like he's already started declining at 29. I could change here. Playing with Panarin, his numbers will probably go up if that's who they, in fact, who they play him with. Or even Kreider for that matter. But he was playing with some really good players in Carolina. He was playing with Svechnikov, Taravainen. You know, these are not Trump players he was playing with. So he could have an offensive jump, but he's never going to be all that great defensively. I personally not sure that I really like the move. So I put that as a minus. The other thing is there was no improvement to their five-on-five -five play offensively. Now you're going to be getting guys like Barkley Goudreau, Sammy Blay, who's also not great on five on five. Philip, Philip uh, Heedle, who I think should have been the second line center after his performance in the playoffs, at least give him a shot, is one of the better five on five players they have, and he's stuck on the third line. Let's just say I am not a fan of what Drury has done for, to this team. I don't mind Yaroslav Halak, but to me, that's the biggest minus for the Rangers. And the biggest plus is their defense is fantastic and goaltending is fantastic. And that's going to carry them all the way. All right. Tell me what you think, New York Rangers fans. Think I'm talking out of my butt or what? I know I love New York Rangers fans because they will come on and say, Blah, you, they will tell you, like, you're a freaking idiot. What do you know about hockey? Do you even watch that? I love it. Do it, man. Do it. Don't mind it a bit. <laughs> all right. Ottawa Senators, plus everything. Dabrinka was an amazing move. So fortunate they were able to get him when it appears that he had a limited amount of teams that he would sign long-term with. So they were able to get him for like a, a first, a third, and a second or whatever it was. It was he's, way, he's worth way more than they gave up. So... You can't get a much bigger plus than that. Absolutely amazing. Claude Giroux for this young team. Unbelievable. Just, just for how he can show team show young guys what it means to be in shape and healthy and fit in the NHL. Just for that alone. Forget about the fact that he's almost a point of game player still at 34 years old. And all of the other things he brings to the table. And one of the best two-way players in the league. I mean, unbelievable. This this lineup, the top nine is going to just absolutely rocket this year. Stutzla has a great opportunity to succeed now. Um, the plus, Cam Talbot, I'm going to give it a, a plus. He's not a number one, but I think he's solid enough. And they got rid of Murray, who couldn't play with a darn. So that's a plus. Now I'll see what we'll see what Toronto does with Murray, but he didn't play like he played like crap for Ottawa. And on Anton Forsberg, I still see a guy in Anton Forsberg that can be a number one. He just, 
it, he looks so much like one of those late blooming guys that just go off. Minus. Just didn't really get the defense where it needs to be, I don't think. But they didn't go out and get defense. But that being said, I mean, I'm giving it a minus for right now. You have Sanderson coming up. Everybody knows he's been talk. We've been talking him. I mean, he's been talked about for quite some time now. And uh, where where is he in the prospect list? I mean, by the way, oh, that's weird. Um, so he could play right from all, all, everything I've heard. He can play right away. And he is going to be a beast. So it really depends on how good they think he's going to be. And then they've got a lot of guys that were ready to play already, like Lassie Thompson. I like Lassie Thompson. First of all, he's a right defenseman. Um, he's only 21 years old. And every time I've seen him in the lineup, he looks like he's, he can hold his own. So, yeah, uh, on paper what they have right now with Shabbat, Travis Hamannick is a place filler. He's not going to be there when those guys are able to take over. Um, Art and Zub is good. I like Art and Zub. Eric Brandstrom, I, I think he's getting better and better every year. He can fill a big role or he can be used for trade. And then Holden Zeitz, uh, you know, it really goes downhill from there. So it's a minus for now. But it could be, it could end up being a plus anyways. Jake Sanderson right here. I don't know why they have him way the heck down there. Oh, they have him in the minors this year. Jake Sanderson. So we'll see if he's able to make it. But that would be the only real minus of this. This not just it wasn't just the offseason for, for the team right now. And you imagine last year at this time doing this, there was a lot more minuses. Like this team has grown, and also the big plus is it's one of the hard to work, hardest working teams in the league. I just love watching them play. Ottawa fans, you agree with everything I said? Comment in the comment section. Let me know. And, uh, okay, this is going to be a tough one. Philadelphia. And you know where it's going to be tough to find the pluses. Plus, Sean Couturier is healthy. Sean Couturier's health is enormous for this team. They cannot win without John Kateri being healthy and in the lineup. Anthony D'Angelo pickup. I don't necessarily like the direction they seem to be going where they just keep on trying to win even though they don't have a team that's even close to a contender. But if you're going to go that direction, I like that pickup. 51-point guy in 64 games. He's not great defensively, but his offense more than makes up for it. Uh, um, and you know, a five million for a short-term contract. I think that's a big plus. I think that was a good, a very good move. And Tortorella, those are the three pluses. If you sign Tortorella, if you want to make the playoffs bubble or whatever they're planning on doing here, then and you don't have the greatest lineup, hiring Tortorella is perfect for that because that's exactly what he'll do. I wouldn't be surprised if Philadelphia makes the playoffs this year just because of Tortorella. Minus, it's not the way they should be going. Almost everybody in Philly knows that. This team should be totally tearing it down and building an actual team. It's, uh, the minus is they keep on throwing darts at a board to make this team into something that's not even close to being. So... I mean, there's other there's there's uh, there's other pluses that there's going to be some more players coming back from injury. Joel Faraby might be in the lineup, which helps, but none of that makes the team a contender now or seemingly in the next three or four years. So, got to rebuild, man. That's the biggest the biggest minus is this team is going to bubble and out, and that's the worst thing you can be. Watch for Carter Hart to have a good year with Tortorella, by the way. Philadelphia Flyers fans, let me know if you agree that this team will, that's the biggest minus, or if you have any more pluses that I missed, or if I'm just full of crap. <laughs> Next, Pittsburgh Penguins. And 
I had a really hard time with this plus minus because I'm not, I mean, Kasperi Kapanen, they, I, I, for instance, Kasperi Kapanen, everybody hates that deal because he didn't earn it last year. I am going to throw them a bone here and think that Kasperi Kapanen, Kasperi Kapanen's biggest problem is he didn't do what he needed to do in the offseason to be able to make it in the regular season. I have to assume he got this deal because he started doing it this year. And if that's the case, it could end up being excellent. But as of right now, I got to give it a minus. Um, Jan Ruda, it's kind of a minus for me. He's not that great defensively. He's very overrated. I'm not really sure what they're going to do. But I will say this. Sullivan is an amazing coach with getting the best out of defensemen. Turning them into things that they weren't there, weren't when Matheson, for instance, who ended up going over to Montreal. Good example. He was absolute ass in Florida. Comes over to Pittsburgh, he turns him around. Cody Cece, before he left to Edmonton, turned him into a good defenseman. He was terrible in Toronto. So, you know, that could happen here as well. And he's not terrible, terrible either. So it's not like a big minus, but it's just not something that I. He's just not a, it's just not a wonderful pickup as far as I'm concerned. Plus, it's, that's simply it's Pittsburgh. This team, because of probably a, a lot because of Crosby and, of course, Sullivan combined, there is no greater competitive team, maybe ever. This team competes. And Sidney Crosby has put a culture in here in this team for the, every individual to get better every single day, just like he does. It's almost like, from what I understand, you cannot not do it if you're a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. The only guy that seems to have not been able to do it is Kasperi Kapanen, and it looks like he's embraced it now. So that's my biggest plus. It's just because it's Pittsburgh. But as far as the overall lineup concern is concerned, this team should not make the playoffs. I think that's what I'm trying to say. If Kenny Malkin getting a contract, all of that is a plus in the way that they're going to try it again. It probably will be another second round and out. Maybe not. It's hard to say. But this team really isn't screaming, we're going to win a cup. I'm rooting for them to win a cup. I want Crosby to win another cup. I want Evgeny, I want it all to work. It would be amazing for these old this old group, you know, a wonderful storyline for Latang. But oh, by the way, the Latang contract was a plus. Six point one for Latang, who's still a very good defenseman. I think is good, is 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 great value. But to me, the minus is it just seems like they're swimming the same stream, kicking the same can. You know what I'm saying? Tell me what you think, Pittsburgh fans in the comment section, and we can chat. Sub yourself up. Let me know. San Jose Sharks. Okay, starting with plus. The biggest plus to me is that I see a general manager in Greer that is willing to look outside of the box to make some moves and I think has really identified some interesting ways to build depth in this, ro in this roster. Um, trading down this year, for instance, I, I think this is a great idea. He's coming into a team that doesn't have overall that much prospect depth is not making the playoffs, which is a terrible combination. So I think in this situation, you really got to trust your scouts who in San Jose, I think have done a pretty good job of picking players. So trust them, trust them to get late rounders that can play and build the depth in this. I, I thought that was a big plus. That was a great move, and I hope they keep on doing it even in this next draft. Just getting as many prospects as you possibly can, building this team into a deep team quick. I think that's really the only way that they're going to be a contender soon if they do that. So I think it was a great move. Um, same, same as... Taking getting Luke Cunning with it, I think it was a second round pick or whatever. He's kind of struggled everywhere. 
Bring him over. He's only 24. He's a big guy. See if you can get the most out of him. Good move. Oscar Lindblom, after his cancer issues and stuff like that, take a chance if he's got a lot of legs. It was like no a low-risk, high-reward moves, every single one of them. And that is my biggest plus. Nico Sturm, solid. He could be a third-line center on most teams. And what he ended up doing, what they ended up doing was building a top four center depth that is pretty solid. Benino, Sturm, Couturier, and Hurdle. Especially two-way. So, I liked all the moves. Matthew Benning, he's been slowly building up into a top four defenseman. And analytically, he's fantastic. So, again, with all, a lot of these moves, too, I think they're very analytics-based, which bodes well for San Jose. If you don't know what analytics are, let's just put it this way. Joe Sackick is a huge analytic guy, and he just won a cup with the team that was built strongly on analytics. So if And, and, by, and by picking up guys like Matthew Benning, it gives me the indication that they're heading that direction. Okay, the minus. Uh, we'll th I'm going to leave it not a minus right now for Kako and Reimer. Kako had his moments. It took him a while to adjust. Over in Minnesota, he looked like he was becoming a very good goaltender, so we'll see. I think it's worth the shot. But Mario Ferrero, that $3 million, eh, he's not in top line. Defenseman. And if Greer's an analytics guy, he knows that. He's got a high compete. He's physical and all of those things like that. But his mind for the defensive side of the game is not strong enough as far as I'm concerned to be a top pair defenseman. Good news is he, he didn't get paid like it. Um, negative, Mark Edward Vlasic is still in the lineup. There's not much he can do about that. Marcus Nudevera, that is a real, like, We'll see what happens because he hasn't been good anywhere he's ever been. Their defense is bad. And their goaltending may be bad too. So that would be a huge minus. The other minus, of course, is all the bad contracts, which you can't really blame on Greer. We've already known that for a long time. And they will likely miss the playoffs. So that's a lot of minuses. But I probably wouldn't have given them really any minuses last year. So there are some pluses, and that's a plus in itself, right? San Jose Sharks fans, let me know what you think there in the comment section about the plus and minuses for your Sharks. All right, Seattle. And he, Francis just made this team into a deep, Offensive team. Huge plus for Oliver Bjorkstrand for a third and a fourth. Sign him, signed to 5.4 and he's a 28 goal scorer. Unbelievable pickup. Like seriously, there was nobody that could make some room for Oliver Bjorkstrand and give more than a third and a fourth. I have no idea what that was all about. The only thing I can think of here is that Kekalainen, Bjorkstrom was a good soldier, man. He was a Columbus guy through and through. Not that he was from Columbus, but never complained. Always wanted to be there. Never wanted to jump ship. I think I don't think this was an easy decision for Kekalainen to move Oliver Bjorkstrand. And I also think it was important to him to send a message to all of his players that he does have that if he does have to make a move like this, he's going to take care of the player. It's better for doing contracts. And it's quite possible that Bjorkstrand said, you know, he gave him, said, give me a couple teams and I'll try to get you there. And one of them was Seattle. Why? Because Alexander Wenberg and Bjorkstrand are good friends. So Alexander Wenberg has probably told him all about Seattle. You love it here, blah, blah, blah. Their wives know each other, all of that kind of stuff like that. And he was on the list, which case it took away the leverage from Kekalainen and then Seattle got the betterment of that, that, got the benefit of that. So, but regardless of all that, it's a beautiful move. Andre Burakovsky for $5 million? Why not? 
60 point player who's actually improved a lot defensively, especially in the last two years. He's probably about average and he's got a shot that can score from anywhere. And Seattle did none of that last year. Like they didn't really have guys like that last year. And now they do. So huge pluses in that regard for sure. Minus, uh, also, of course, you got Shane Wright they got in the draft, and that fell to them, and that's probably a big plus. I, they weren't expecting that, and, you know, that's wonderful. So I got to think of some minuses here. Same minus as I had last year. I'm not a Grubauer guy, and I hope he changes things around now. It was It is pretty tough to play in front of – a whole bunch of teammates you'd never played before. I think he is better than he was last year, but I still don't think I still think that contract is going to hurt them. Uh, there, they could use they they could use a lot more mobility on the defensive side of things, and that would be about the only minus from whatever happened in the year. This team could make the playoffs. It's possible. It's possible. I like what Francis did. He drafted two big centers. They got Matthew Beneers and Shane Wright. And then he said, you know what? This could work. It's not a complete rebuild. We're going to be good right away when these young kids can play with Schwartz if he doesn't get injured again. Eberle, McCann, Bjorkstrand, Tanev, all of those guys like that. This team is pretty solid right off the get-go. I'm not sure. And and the other good thing about it is, I know I'm hard, having a hard time finding the minuses here. Burkowski and Bjorkstrand are tradable players if everything goes south. If, the, if it doesn't mesh, if they're still missing the playoffs and they still feel that they need to keep on getting depth, which they do, they don't have a lot of depth. In, and that would be the other minus. Making these moves makes it very unlikely that they're going to be able to get a top pick in the in the first next next year, like a top top pick. They're probably going to be close to bubble, so like in the ten to thirteen range of picks. And for a team that's obviously building because they are uh, obviously just building right now because they're an expansion team, I don't think that's really the best thing. And that's my minus. Now my minus is that this could be a bubble team and out now for a long time, the way it's built. All right, Seattle fans, let me know in the comment section what you think about the biggest pluses and minuses. What do you think of Groovy? What do you think of all the moves for the forwards? Do you think that they're just a bubble team or better? Let me know. Don't be afraid. I'm going to talk back to you. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, uh, for sure, I'll talk down, talk back to you there. St. Louis Blues. And the biggest plus is still the depth on, on forward, on their for, in their forward group, of course. Um, they didn't really add too much to their lineup. Uh that's about the best I can say is that they're still a good team. They're a very good team, especially offensively. Because they didn't really add all that much to really say that's a plus or whatever. And what they did do, I think, is mostly a minus, actually. Um, you had to let Huso go. I'm not going to call that a minus. Bennington had a strong playoffs. Everybody had a sigh of relief. And now we have to wonder if he's going to be able to do it in the regular season. He almost looks like one of those goaltenders that kind of whole hum it through the playoffs and then, or through the regular season, and then knocks it over, knocks it out, out of the park in the playoffs. There's been a few goaltenders like that in the past. Um, uh, Holtby comes to mind actually. Um, and my biggest negative is Letty. I don't know what that's all about. He's just awful defensively. It's terrible. When he gets it on a stick, he can move it out all right. Um, he is a good skater. He's a, I think this team has lost its way after Armstrong left. They obviously do not pay attention to analytics, and they go based on skill level of each individual player. What I mean by that is 
they're swooned by a good skating defenseman. He's a good skating defenseman. And people are. Like, we have biases towards that. You see a guy, just beautiful skater out there, and you say, oh, what a great defenseman. Not necessarily. And Letty is a good example of that. His expected goals against for the last four or five years have been terrible. Um, when he gets it on his stick, he can move it out quick. But for $4 million until 2026, that's an awful contract. And they needed a better defenseman than that. I, I'm still not sold on their defense. Uh, Marco Scandella, they were actually trying to trade him in the Kachuk trade, apparently. So they say, I don't know, but uh, that would be a good idea. Uh, and Pareko's overrated. Krug and Falk is their best two defensemen out of this whole group. So that's my negative is they didn't do anything to change their defense. And the worse than that is that they don't think they have to. And when they do do something, they do something like Letty. I think this team is going down. I hate, sorry, St. Louis fans. The trajectory is not up. Plus, one of the deepest forward groups, scoring forward groups in the league. Uh, Jordan Cairo should keep on going the way he is. Robert Thomas has got is only getting better. You know, there's a lot to like about the forward group in this roster, but I don't like the defensive group. And I'm still up in the air about Bennington. Those are my plus and minuses. Tell me what you think, St. Louis fans, there in the comment section. Sub yourself up. All right. Next. Tampa Bay Lightning. And biggest plus. The biggest plus is that they're still a contender after everything they've had to do with their cap space and all that kind of stuff like that. Um, getting Ian Cole was a decent move. Uh, that, that's, that's the plus. That's it, really. You know, that happened from last year, getting Nicholas Paul. Great pickup. Um, you know, still having Perry. Just all the moves that they have made to keep themselves in the race. Have been very good. Ne the 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 uh, minus, of course, and really, I don't know if there was much they could do about it. Is Palat and you know Brandon Hagel taking that spot? Hagel is 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 pretty good, but he's not Palat. You know, he's not Palat. He he. I I don't know if he'll ever be Palat. Palat is an unbelievable two way player, a great playoff player, a winner. Hegel, he's a he's a different type of player. He's a grinder, but he, he he quite often puts himself out of position defensively. He's got a wonderful shot, but he kind of runs around. Palat pl played the game so compact. Um, he he didn't overplay. He didn't overcommit. He was perfect. And maybe maybe Hegel will be will become more like that, but. For right now, he's far away. No, he's not really that at all. Um, giving Cal Foot getting a chance, to, I think I'm going to call that a plus actually. And a good young player taking over for Ruda. Don't mind that a bit. And I love the contracts for Sergeyev and Chernak. So those were huge pluses to me. This the biggest minus what is the the loss of Palat and retooling. Oh, by the way, oh yeah, I forgot. Sorelli will be up there too, right? So Sorelli will probably take that left wing spot, or Stamkos will move over to the left, and Sorelli will be in the or point will be in the middle, and Sorelli will move down here, and Hagel will move somewhere down in the lower lines. Maybe Kalorn, because Kalorn had a terrible playoffs too. But the other minus is. They're in a position now where they really need to get some younger players. It's it's starting to wear thin. Uh, it's it's going to be tough now for the next couple of years building up their depth to be able to make another run again. That would be my biggest minus. All right, Tampa Bay fans, tell me what you think about that. Comment in the comment section. Sub up to my channel. Toronto Maple Leafs. Everything to me is a plus 
on this lineup, people will say, well, you know, I would like a receiver replacement for Justin Hall, but I think Lila Gren is that. Um, I still, you know, but the overall, this overall team should be a contender and continue being a contender. You can say what you want about the contracts for Tavares and all of that. It's still a contending team. All of those things are a plus. The minus, of course, Matt Murray and Ilya Samsona. Wow. Uh, they, I mean, you got to give Dubas credit, man. The guy's got balls. He obviously must be talking to his goaltender coaches, and they're saying we can get Murray. We can, do, we, you get Murray, we'll we'll turn him in. We know what it, the problem is. We know how to help him. We're going to turn him into what he was years ago, uh, on a on a sample size that when he came back from his injury, he looked good last year in Ottawa for twenty twenty five games. That's basically what they're saying. Woo! What? That's balls, man. That is balls. If anything, you got to give Dubis credit for having a lot of balls because Ilya Samsonov was ass last year. Like, I can't say it any other way. He was terrible. And they think out of one of these guys, they're going to turn him into a number one. Murray has been terrible for a couple years now. I don't know. You got me, man. If they turn him around, I bow. I bow to you for this decision. Because if they do, this is a contending team. They almost beat Tampa Bay last year. I, I think their defense is, gets, gets, is underrated. People, people uh, slam on their defense a little too much. Morgan Riley, TJ Brody is a good two-way guy. Jake Muslin is still very, very good even for his age. Um, Jordana was a nice pickup. Lila Grin, I think, is going to be fantastic, and you still have Sandy in there. So, I would like to see maybe a little better depth at their forward group, but you could say that about a lot of teams. The minus is what they did with goaltending for sure. Tell me what you think, Toronto Maple Leafs fans. Is that a big minus for you as well? Do you think that that's the biggest minus on this roster? Let me know. Vancouver Canucks, and the biggest plus is their forward group is good, man. Getting Ilya Mikhaev was really good pickup. Not a big Jason Dickinson's guy for the third line, but maybe they can find somebody else to, to play that somewhere down the road. But they're overall, especially if they keep JT Miller, there's nothing wrong with this forward group and getting Andre Kuzmenko was a wonderful low-risk move. I mean, you got Nils Hoglander in your fourth line. He's a third liner on a lot of teams. Like, offensively, this team is a huge plus. Thatcher Demko is insane. Absolutely insane. But if you look at his numbers, you say, well, why not? Why? Why do you say that? 2.72 and a .915. That's not all that great. Well, we get to the minus. This defense is terrible. Just inequivocally terrible. Ekman Larson's not good. Tyler Myers had a better year last year, but still not a top two winger. Or, sorry, uh, right right defenseman. Quinn Hughes is fantastic offensively. Still hasn't got his defense down yet. Uh, he's got some room to grow. Luke Shen is whatever. People love him because he hits people and he's big. That's it. Well, he's he's obviously a good defensive defenseman. No, he's not. Puts himself out of position for hits all the time. Doesn't have the foot speed. He's always having to block shots because he can't get into the position where he's better off to be. The blocking shots is not the be-all, end-all of things. It's whether you get the puck. Blocking, You can block a shot. It goes right back to the person, and they can pass it around and do it. They still have possession. You can block a shot because you are totally out of position, where if you wouldn't have made the hit, you could have got back in time to stop the shot, put it on your stick, and move it out. And that's the problem with Shen. He does that way too much. He should not be a top four defenseman. And Dermot and Burroughs are whatever. They shouldn't be five sixes. Bad defense is still the problem. And it sounds like they know it because 
it's been actually almost pub, pretty much publicly said they want it, they want to you know improve their defense. Not too many times a team is very public about how bad their defense is, but they are, and it is. All right, tell me what you think, Vancouver fans. Not much coming up the pipe to help out. Maybe Jack Rathbone, you know, but nothing much to help out. Do you think, do you agree with my plus minus assessment? Vegas Golden Knights plus. Jack Eichel's going to rip this year. Count it. He's going to rip it up this year. I bet you any amount of money. Phil Kessel was a nice pickup for a million and a half. He's not great defensively, but his offense actually makes up for it. And you'll say, well, that's, he only had eight goals last year. He had nobody to pass him the puck last year. He was the one dishing off to everybody as they fumbled it around because they didn't have the skill to do anything with it. Give him a chance here with this lineup. I think you'll see a much better point production from Phil Kessel. I think it was a good move. Negative, the minus, and I don't need to tell anybody out there in Vegas here. Vegas here is, well, they're in cap hell. They can't add to their lineup. That is, They're going to have a difficult time adding to their lineup. I think their defense is fine still, though, as long as they don't get injured. Uh, I think it's really good, actually, especially Shea Theodore, amazing defenseman. Um, but goaltending. Laner out. Even with Laner in, he had a rough year last year. They're going to po- put pin their hopes on Logan Thompson and Laurent Bressois, who just came off the surgery. That is the biggest minus, no doubt about it. And it may do them in. It may. But I think they're going to have a much better year this year. What do you guys think, Vegas fans? Do you think they're going to have a better year this year? Uh, let me know in the comment section. Washington. Plus, Dylan Strom was a good pickup. Uh, Marcus Johansson's okay. Overall, this lineup is a bubble team. Uh, Eric Gustafson, I don't know what that's all about. I mean, and getting Darcy Kemper, I suppose, is better. But I have my concerns. Uh, He didn't have a great playoffs last year. Well, he won a cup. I know. Colorado won a cup with some of the worst goaltending, maybe the worst goaltending of any of a team that's ever won a cup. Uh, Niemi, maybe, in Chicago. But I even think it was worse than that. So he can be, he's been really good in his career. He's been really bad in his career. He has injury issues. I almost got to put it as a minus, but it's a plus in the sense that they had to do something. And they did. So I'll give them a plus on that. Besides that, it's mostly minus. I I just, the defense is not good enough for a team that's looking to win a cup and they're only getting older, right, everybody? So the plus really is Dylan Strom and Connor Brown. Sorry, I forgot to mention Connor Brown. I thought those were both good pickups. Um, their top nine is, is not too bad, but overall, I think it's a minus because this team wasn't made good enough to be considered a real contender and they're old and that's not a bad, good, good combination. All right. Finally, the Winnipeg Jets, man, oh man, it's hard to find the pluses with the Winnipeg Jets. What they already had, Kyle Connor, Nikolai Ehlers. Cole Perfetti probably is a big plus. I think he's going to have a uh, fantastic year at 21 years old. Great talent. But virtually nothing was done to this lineup from last year. Bringing back Mason Appleton, I'll give that a plus. But is that really going to turn the needle? The minus, nothing really has been done. In fact, they got worse in backup goaltender with David Riddich. He, he's been terrible for three years now. But their defense isn't any better, and it wasn't great. Um, getting the coach in bonus. Sounds like he was the only one available. 
We'll see what happens. He's going. This is going to. He's going to try to turn this team into a defensive juggernaut. So guys like Mark Shifley, look out! You decided to take a year or two off from playing defense. Well, he's going to be on you like stink on poop. That's one thing I'll give that as a plus here. Getting bonus. I don't know what happened to Mark Shifley, but he's got to get his head out of his butt before this team goes anywhere. And if any coach might be able to do it, maybe it's bonus. I don't know. It sounds like a either it's going to end up being basically it's either me or him from Shifley. Shifley is either going to embrace it and do it or end up being traded. Because that to me is the biggest, one of the biggest problems that they have. I just can't believe how much that guy fell off the wagon as far as defense is concerned. Maybe he was listening to Blake Wheeler, I guess. Maybe the two of them just kind of rub off on each other. Like, yeah, you know, the other, the other people can play defense. We're here to score. Got a too big of a head about themselves or something. Tell me what you think. You know, is, Hullabuck is going to have to do everything on this roster. It's a plus that you have Hullabuck, but it's a minus that they're going to have to depend on him as much as they are. I just don't see this being a playoff team. Tell me what you think, Winnipeg Jets fans. What's your plus and minus for them? Man, oh man, I went long. All right, that's my full 42. I got to let you go. This has almost been an hour long. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.